interview with the Runway Girl Network, and we're at T5 JetBlue's terminal for the launch of their FlyFi in-flight connectivity system. Now listen, this system has been a long time coming, but better late than never, and a bunch of us app geeks and bloggers are going to put it through the test. So Jason Rabinowitz, aka Airline Flyer, where are we going? Show us the road. Today we are going north uh, over Long Island, then we're going up over Nantucket, then looping around Bangor, Maine, and then making a beeline straight back down to JFK. That almost looks like a champagne bottle right there. Yeah. Do you see that? Do we have any bubbly on this one? I hope so. I really do. Uh, my name is Marty St. George. I'm CEO of Marketing. And it's my pleasure to welcome you guys here today for what will be a very exciting event. And it will only be more exciting once you get to actually experience fly fly yourself. So we can't wait to share this with you. First, first on board is Chapter Fly Fly Fly. That's right. So you don't have Wi-Fi, I'll set up the phone Oh, check it. Hello. Thank you. Hey. Christian Malcher from Flight Global. I'm so excited. You are? To use KM. You're taking the <laughs> Are you excited, Mary? Of course. You've been covering it for so long. Oh, look at this man. Oh, no. Seth he Miller, did. Brian. <laughs> no, he did. Good morning. Wandering and Aaron and Brian. A little breakfast. Oh, I'll take nice one. Thank you. <laughs> mm. We hope you enjoy the flight with us today. Thank you so much for being our customers. Welcome on board. So, oh. Good morning, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, hi, again. Rachel McCarthy, VP of In Flight. We're absolutely thrilled that you're joining us this morning for our Flight by Flight. Um, I have to keep my notes up here because um, this really is a very special day for us. We have been working on this with Viasat and Live TV for over three years. I was fortunate enough to be a part of the original team and got to go to Kazakhstan to watch a satellite by satellite launch two years ago. I have to tell you it's very cool to think then we're going to be offering true broadband connectivity eight times faster than anything else that is out there and also just think about this enough bandwidth in your individual seat compared to what others are offering on their whole aircraft. Geekdom here has just gone off the chart. What are you two doing? We're FaceTiming each other. From, from row two to row three. <laughs> <laughs> but the really interesting thing is that the quality is remarkable. Like, the quality is really good. This is, I've, I've been doing a lot of video testing today, and this is the best latency that you've got. So if you're video chatting on a plane, I highly recommend FaceTiming. Do that again. Do that again. You guys have four equipped right now, and it's going to be, am I right, 15 per month coming January? Yep. Um, obviously, great speeds are easy when there's only four aircraft equipped. What happens when you have a couple hundred aircraft equipped and also the United Continental Boeing 737 fleet is equipped as well? Well, it's a very different technology than what people are accustomed to with the air ground systems. Uh, you know, right now, the satellite is been launched as of a year ago. It's very little, yeah, it's very low capacity. There are years and years before that bird's going to reach capacity. Uh, you know, we've got a graphic, which I think you've seen before, that shows the capacity of the satellite versus the capacity of the underground systems. We're not worried about that at all. And there's actually more KA capacity coming online in the next couple of years. So uh, we, we, we really thought we'd be able to hold this forever. You don't have any concerns then on the capacity? But... Not whatsoever. And honestly, that's why we waited as long as we did. Uh, they don't like to use this phrase, but I sort of call this last more advantage. When did you ultimately make the decision to go KA? You know, obviously you looked at various different, you looked at KU, you looked at KU um, right. L band as well. When, right. when did you ultimately decide KA was the right decision and why? Yeah, we made the decision in 2008 to go KA, but it took a little while to formulate the entire strategy and the, the system architecture. And then we really kicked off development in a big way at the beginning of 2010. Yeah. The, tell me a little bit about the, uh, number one, the installation process. You've 
guys are handling that right in, down in Melbourne in Florida in your in your facility. Is that right? In Orlando in our hangar in Orlando. Oh, in yes. your hangar in Orlando. Okay. Yes. Tell, so what is it like? What what do you got to do to the aircraft to get this system on board? Well, as you know, we already have the Direct TV Entertainment yeah. product on board, so it's not just about putting the connectivity product on the aircraft. It's integrating it with the existing live entertainment product. Yeah. So we we've integrated those two products together. We have a very unique architecture and, and technology with the radom. Um, the radom in the installation is actually lighter weight and more aerodynamic than our TV only product. Wow, and that's the general dynamics uh, radom that you guys select. That's correct. correct. Yes. What's your experience been with other in-flight connectivity systems that you've tried? Internationally? Yeah. Um, unstable. Mm. Oh. Inability to connect repeatedly on certain uh, 77Ws. And annoying when they turn it off and you're circling to land, it's going to work. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you all very much. And hopefully, it's a lot of chance experiences will have to wait very, very soon. Oh, well, look, it's just being psyched right now. Oh, Google Plus, X Cloud, and the X Cloud. Thank you very much. Oh, hey, I'm great. I'm having a bit of a hang up here. Wow. That's embarrassing. Uh, guys, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the flight.